a wise man once said, if you want to get stuff done, but you haven't got enough time, you need to sleep faster. So welcome to Motor Mornings. It's Monday, it's Motor Mornings. Welcome everyone. Oh, Monday. What am I going to do on Monday? Well, now the engine is the right way up. That's the Bedford CF engine of. I'm just going to go through my gaskets. So obviously, this is the gasket set that I bought uh, for the bottom end. But this one is what came with the van. Um, I've got a head gasket, which is good. So, because we're getting very close to putting the head on. So I'm going to have a proper look at that, see sort of what standard that's in. It's all a little bit damp actually, so yeah, just going to go through it and see, just have a proper look at it. Um, obviously take the protective film off. Um, yep. Anyway, that's my goal for this morning. Uh, so what are you doing this morning? And more importantly, what am I watching on YouTube? Oh, I'm only watching Classic Mini Workshop with the uh, Mark 3S, which to be honest, is probably my favorite of the S's. And that color, let me just tell you right now, that's the color I'm thinking about painting the bed for you. Yeah, base color with a few extras on top because it's such a lovely 70s colour. Hey, we'll see though. Alright, I'm just doing a video on uh, taking the um, front door apart. I hope it's better than um, Mini Tom's. I first bought, uh, <laughs> and I started doing work on them. Right, I didn't have a clue let's crack on. The only Mini I've ever owned that had wind up windows oh, yeah, so is Bernie the 12 second 5 GT. Oh no, tell a lie, I have had a few Mark 3s. Um, uh, Never owned a, a later type of Mini. I'm not talking BMW, I'm talking Cooper to age. Then you can't actually get the door handle off without taking this um, off anyway, so it's one of those screws is right behind there, so you have to release this to get the door handle off. It's how much sort of surface corrosion so on the door has happened already. Good plan. If you've got these little black um, bump things uh, in your doors and you're putting them on a new door, do not forget to get them off of the door because I've had real trouble find, trying to find these replacements. Okay, 
that. Does fit that that gasket though overlaps the? I don't think that's the right gasket. You know what they say about small hands, and he hasn't got them. So that might be a small gasket. Okay, it does look like that is a 1800 head gasket off a Frenzer or a Magnum or something like that. Looking on eBay, you can see how the... Sorry Mark, i to shut you up for a minute. Yeah, so it looks like this is an 1800 head gasket. It fits, but obviously the hole is different. Uh, but yeah, looking on eBay, here we go. Bedford 2.3 slant petrol CF van head gasket set. But look at the, they're nice and round. Look, I've got the old one somewhere, but obviously that's no, I'm not going to put an old one back on. Luckily, it's what, there we go, £25 plus £8.50 postage. So, whatever. Oh well, that's kind of scuppered. That's the project slightly, isn't it? Um, so I think I'm just going to quickly go through some of the other gaskets, just see what I've got. Yeah, no, I mean that's been sat in the van for I don't know how long, so that's probably why it's gone a bit manky. That looks alright though. That's the. Basically the rocker cover gasket, cork, nothing wrong with that. Right, I have no idea what they are. Look at them. You wanna know what they are? Oh well. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's Choo Choo Tuesday. Oh. Oh, lovely brew. Right, what am I doing this morning? I am going to have a go at cleaning and possibly greasing up for long term storage the, uh, the bores on the Bedford CF drag racing boogie van. Well, that's what I'm up to this morning. More importantly, what are you up to this morning? And what am I watching on YouTube? I'm watching uh, the Boosted Mini with Project Kev. <laughs> this is such a good build. What's going on today? Well, there's all the pity bit, bitty bits now. I've done a bunch of painting, which was a bit boring to show you, just prepping stuff. Doing a few little welds here and there. Got to crack on. I think I'm going to ask some of my chums about these bores. This quite possibly, I may not be running this engine for some time. Like, you know, who knows? You know, if I stick it in the van, it might only be months till it's running. But if I decide not to use this engine, it may be years until it's running. So I'm just wondering, what? Well, how do I, do, should I coat the bores in something? Basically, you know, with the assembly lube. Is, a, is assembly lube too much? I've got a engine build here on the island. Dutch Speed. I might ask him. Uh, and I might ask Paul Jeffries as well. Just see. Is, is putting assembly lube in there too much? Um, yeah. Right. Let me get on WhatsApp and ask those guys. Right, I actually think this is unnecessary. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it, but 
where it's going to be stationary for a long time. Oh, very nice. So if you had a few techniques as I was going along, Rich, starts with this area, uh, as you can probably tell. And then finished sort of this ends, which I can see a lot, lot more better. And what you didn't see is I've done a little bit on the turbo outlet just before it goes into the intercooler, just to help a little bit. There is fresh air coming in here, but the general engine temperatures are going to be pretty high, the engine bay temperatures. So anything to keep those temperatures down will be, will be good. Pointless if this pipe is warming up to then blow even hotter air through the intercooler. The intercooler has to do even more work. Uh, return goes straight into the engine, so that's fine. Run out of paint, so we'll clean up that later. And this is basically intake. So this comes from the air filter, and then up to a bend, which comes into here. This comes round, last elbow into the turbo. So again, nice cold intake we've got. Try and keep it just even if it's one or two degrees or uh, less with this on. And that's worth it. Again, the engine temperatures in the bay are going to get pretty warm. And all this pipe won't run behind a radiator. Yeah, so never really mess with turbos. Oh. Bay temperatures again is the exhaust. But yeah, I know temperature is hugely important, isn't it? I feel like I'm wasting my time now, but because the piston rings are going to get rid of this, aren't we? Um, and we've also switched out some random kind of nasty valves. Like I say, I'm just worried if I don't use this engine and it sits for a couple of years. Do you know what I had a dream about rapping last night? God. And it was like, do you remember 80s films? When the titles went up, it was all a rage to rap. Have some rap artist. Rap about what happened in the film as the credits were going up. Like Ghostbusters did it. Everyone seemed to do it. I had a dream about that, and it's like, yeah, yeah, next, next episode of the gentleman's motor racing team. You've got to be on trend <laughs> and uh, rap about what was in the series episode. How bizarre! Mm. Right. Um, we'll be doing little things as we go. Uh, so, uh, engine going to order myself a new head gasket set. The main uh, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's motor mornings. And it's Wednesday, so we're about to go over the hump. That's good, isn't it? Check out the fuel tank odds for the rally mini. That little bracket, look. Can you tell what that's for? Uh, that's actually for a standard later type fuel tank strap bracket. And that's for Bernie, the 1275 GT. Yeah, we're on it. So anyway, what am I up to this morning? So uh, yeah, I stalled yesterday, obviously because of the head gasket thing. So the head gasket, that uh, I think it was an 1800 one, isn't it? That's now on eBay. So, you know, if I can get a tenner for it, it'll help pay for the gasket set that I've just had to buy. So I've ordered a gasket set. This is the, the old one that obviously came off the engine. And now when you look at it, it's a big difference. Look at that. Totally different size holes, basically. Um, so, yeah, I went through my gasket set. And yes, I've got gaskets, but not, not enough. So I just went and bought myself a headset which was about, I think it was 25 pounds plus postage, obviously, the Isle of Wight. So yeah, if I can recoup some from that old head gasket, that would be great. So what am I doing this morning? I'm going through auxiliary parts, uh, if that makes sense. So um, obviously this is just like a fan belt, So, but that needs a 
just needs a good clean up doesn't it so i'll attack it with a wire wheel i won't be doing that this morning because um i don't want to upset neighbors and stuff um and there's a obviously the oil filter housing i've got a gasket for that but those are the bolts um yeah all that sort of stuff um and if you look under my bench this is pretty much where i keep obviously there's the uh dishwasher for watching parts there's the little tiny shop compressor just for blowing stuff out but under there there's mainly mini engines but there are some you know boxes with bed for bits and stuff like that so that's what i'm going to be doing that this morning hammer jolly good sort out and cleaning some stuff up um but anyway what are you doing more importantly what are you doing and more importantly what am i watching on youtube i'm back on the ferrari look Ah, oh, this is such a good series. And uh, I do like his workspace. He's got his new office set up. Gosh, uh, wouldn't I love a separate building just for, just that looks like that, where I can put the computer in and the microphone in and all that sort of stuff. Welcome back guys. I'm Mike Burroughs from Stanceworks. I'm currently standing in front of my newly renovated office. I finally have a place to not only hang up some of my stuff, but to do kind of the creative side of this whole business, and I'm really excited about it. I've never really had what I would call like my own space here in this building, and it feels good. This is a result of demolishing what was previously my office. Anyway, premise. right, He's got to crack on. Lifts so that it's easier to get vehicles in and out of the shop. And... Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's Thursday. Woo! Absolutely ripping through this week. Well, look what I got in the post yesterday. I cannot believe it. Uh, this is the gasket set. Like, it came in its own van and everything. So that's awesome, which means I can actually start putting the, the head on it. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save that for Friday because what a great Friday feeling that will be. Um, so yesterday I cleaned up these little components. Uh, so I am. I'm going to use some uh, some engine paint. Give them a good coat of paint this morning uh, so I can slap them on tomorrow morning and rip open the gasket set and start putting the head on. Oh, these little, that's the whole thing about these mornings. I'm, I'm not a fan, I'm sure you all know, of engines. Um, I say, I say it all the time. I don't know what it is, but I just, I just don't enjoy doing it too much. But doing it in these little nuggets is great, you know, and projects progress, don't they? Anyway, that's what I'm doing this morning. More importantly, what are you doing this morning? And what am I watching on YouTube? I'm only back on the old off-road Lamborghini Huracan. I'd love to do something like this for the Autograss Mini. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? So getting started on steering, we have our whole steering setup kind of laid out here. Uh, so over here will be a steering wheel, which we'll anyway, show you a little bit later. We got a really cool. Got to crack on. Runs forward. This steering shaft. Is is a piece that's meant to hold the steering rack in place where it's been designed to go. So that's kind of the lay of the land of all the pieces that we have and how they all connect up. Now, this uh, steering rack right here is a really great steering rack. I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece for Oscar. It'll pull all this out first, and then we'll move on to one of this piece up. That's another tool I'd like. It's one of those... CNC plasma cutters that every, all these YouTubers seem to have. Mate, it just looks and makes fabricating, I don't want to say easier, but definitely more professional. Uh, 
comes over here. So that bolts on to this guy right here, which we're going to do right now. And then this actually also bolts on to this, which also we just finished welding up as well. So we're going to get everything. Don't you hate it when you start losing hairs? Not on your head. We got the tie rods connected to the hub and connected back to the steering rack. So they're in on both sides. The alignment's looking pretty decent. Uh, we're going to have to fine tune it, but I want to fine tune it once we get the um, steering shaft in there. Can we run it out? And uh, that way we can move the wheel left and right, back and forth. Because right now, unlike a normal steering rack, you can kind of just push the wheel and it'll move. This thing's so heavy duty. We're just doing a little piece for build style hackery, just figuring out stuff. We're going to kill a Mustang axle uh, for research. So we're going to cut this boot off, take the CV apart, and see what this thing's made of. It's like the state's just littered with old Mustangs, do you reckon? Or is it a bit like us with Ford Escorts? They, there were loads of them, but now there isn't. All right, research complete. So, kind of as we expected, we were making sure that there's enough material in here to be able to use this thing and turn it into just an outer stuff that can bolt on to an adapter plate that can bolt on to our CV. So you can see why in the off-road world you use through, and we're in a bit of a- Made right in England. Here, Don't see that very often now. Place. Oscar is like his version of uh, Dave Jaguar's Amir. I need an Oscar or an Amir, it would be brilliant. Someone that can uh, weld like a boss, spray paint like a boss. But yeah, talking about uh, what he's talking about, the seats are holding him up. That's the thing, isn't it? Until I got a seat in the Mini, I couldn't, there's loads of things I couldn't do. Right, I think that'll do for this morning. I'll probably give it another coat. I've still got to flip that one over. I've still got to flip that one over uh, and paint the other side. Um, but you never know, I might be able to get that done during my lunch break we'll see anyway progress i thought someone left the light on outside it's unbelievable good morning good morning it's only friday isn't it Blah. oh this week is whiz by for me i don't know what it is oh strong cup of coffee this morning Wow, right, what am I doing? Well, of the head gasket set arrived. So I've absolutely chuffed to bits with that. These have come out pretty well, pleased with that. So it's just normal engine paint. Um, I think I am probably gonna try and waz those on. Uh, and obviously I've realized that I can't tighten that and talk that up anyway, because uh, that goes behind the the timing cover and that goes in front of the timing cover so but uh i can find a gasket for the uh oil filler can't i oil filter so that's fine uh and then open this up check out my head gasket and there's the head so painstakingly cleaned it lapped in all the valves and all that sort of stuff on that head so um that's been in storage since that happened, so that's great. So there you go, that's what I'm up to. But I just want to show you something before we continue. Check that out. So this is the old timing light from Car Club, uh, our Isle of Wight Car Club. Unfortunately, it died, uh, and 
the guys in the know they tested it and also anyway yeah it's dead so we got a really nice fancy one now um but they said uh gonna throw it in a bin i said don't do that i'll put all my trophies in it all right and check out that is my first car any idea what sort of pet what that is i'd love to see if i can track one of those down right anyway that's what i'm doing what are you doing and what am i watching on youtube i'm only watching classic mini performance i love his workspace yeah as suspected the steering rack will not move it is that new right do your friday at all so i can't adjust the tracking so the only way around it is to get a large nut and slide it over the steering rack and got an amazing space now. Full post in this. Oh. Right, well it's finished. So we put it back together, the wheels are back on, you can see behind me, we put the tracking gauges on and straight away you can see that we haven't put it back in the same place as it was before. Uh, we did adjust the driver's side, which is the right side when you're in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Love my scraper. Made in the USA. That's, well, that's solid. Nothing's coming out. I know it's a chilly day, but that is going in the bin. Oh, I've got to find the nuts, the bolts for it, haven't I? Oh. All right, back up and go again. Oh. I'll do this now. Oh, yeah. Ah, look at that. So, shiny side in. That need another washer? No, you don't need a washer on your washer, do you? That's just, that's where madness lies. Anyway, so, but I'm not gonna tie hitting that up. But it's time to whip out the new gaskets and put the head on. Woo, it's Friday. And I think, Somewhere between like three and a half to four is standard, I think. I think we have it set. Right, enough filming for the moment. We've got some adjustments to Piece do. Piece of art, isn't it? And a tiny little Isn't that beautiful? Side, so we'll have to work out how. I'm you're not going to see it. Adjust the tie bars, I think. Oh, graphite grey with a I bit of. Looks like brushed aluminium with a red one. performance stripe around the side, both which is obviously a season. It just looks brilliant. All right, so ends another afternoon in the mini performance workshops. That uh, caster change has really been a pain in the ass. Right, welcome back. Another evening, it almost is now. We've been here all, all afternoon. What was that? Yeah, uh, that's the thing with the. Uh, I've got to do the suspension on the rally mini fairly soon. Um, but that is the thing, isn't it? If you go to a, I don't know if they're all the same, but they'll, at an alignment shop, they'll charge you for each adjustment. So, so much for each adjustment. And if you've gone like full adjustable suspension, Kev, pay attention. And don't forget to remind me to put the no. I put there's a, like a little O-ring that goes in there, around there, because that is actually an oil way. You can just see it going down there. Look, if you can see it in that light. Oh, my coffee's gone cold. Session we've had on it, and we are done for now. A lot of adjustments to do. Uh, 
adjustment needed on the camera and the caster to get it all within the, uh, the range we wanted and then it's just a case of fine tuning it down. Adjustment at a time, and like I keep saying, one adjustment adjusts the other, so you keep checking backwards and forwards. So the last thing we've done is we've checked the, the tracking and we've got it set with a tiny little bit of toe out. Um, right, I've only just nipped them up. I won't talk them down. The couple of reasons. One, I don't know what the torque setting is. Uh, the other one is I don't want to cock it up, so I don't want to rush it. And the third reason is I've almost run out of time because it's almost time for breakfast. But it's Friday. Do you know what? I might talk that down tonight, actually, when I get home from work. For that pure Friday feeling. Good. And there we go. Just proving motor mornings can be productive. Those little 45 minutes, they all add up, don't they? It's coming together. Right, see you next week.